All right. Hello. Um, this is going to be a video on the different numbers and equations that we use in FRC and engineering in general. Um, yeah. So let's get started. All right. So what numbers are we going to be looking at? So we are going to start with um, specific numbers with fasteners first. Uh, then we're going to look at some numbers in relation to gears, pulleys, belts, and sprockets. And then finally, we're going to look at uh, some of the physics that goes into FRC. This is very just very basic physics. Uh, all right, let's uh, move into it. All right, so uh, fasteners. So fasteners are basically just uh, you know bolts, rivets, things that uh, keep other mechanisms together, other parts together. Uh, so bolts are uh, named using the convention uh, depending on if they're US or metric. So for uh, US, uh, it's going to be diameter and then the threads per inch. And so for diameters that are smaller than a quarter of an inch, they're going to be classified by uh, uh, numbers between 1 and 12. So you'll see like uh, 680 or uh, um, 220 things like that uh, and then after a quarter inch it goes back it's like quarter 20 quarter 28 um, and then metric uh, you're going to ha it's always going to start with an M uh, regardless of any type of bolt so it's going to be M and then the diameter in millimeters uh, then the distance between the threads in millimeters so like 1.0 so that means um, the it's one millimeter between each thread and then the length in millimeters so uh, 20 it'd be 20 millimeters long meaning there's 20 threads in it and if it's like an m8 that means it eight millimeters in diameter uh, rivets are usually just uh, just measured by the diameter uh, so you'll be like, I want a three sixteenths rivet, or uh, but but there is there is a length aspect to them, uh, depending on how thick your material that you're riveting is. Uh, and sometimes they use the one to twelve convention uh, if they're U.S. rivets, and sometimes they don't. Uh, yeah, and then. Uh, refrain to using only a uh, number 10 and quarter inch fasteners for your designs um, these are pretty standard numbers in FRC standard numbers in general and so uh, try to use the these whenever wherever you can possibly uh, ten, try to use quarter uh, number 10 the most uh, but for things like shafts you're gonna have to use quarter tw quarter 20 um, uh, so you should memorize both the tap and close for both. Uh, so for a number 10, the tap dimension is going to be 0 0.159 and the close fit dimension is going to be uh, 0 0.196. Uh, and the, the actual di diameter of the number 10 bolt is around 0 0.190. I believe inches uh, yeah uh, and then quarter 20 uh, is going to be a tap uh, 0 0.201 and then close is going to be a 0 0.257 um, I, and then you should use tap holes wherever you need threads and keep in mind that you can only tap in material that is 3 16 and thicker unless your unless your uh, threads are very very close together but most of the time you can only tap in 3 16 or thicker um, 
uh, and use close holes uh, when you need the fasteners to go through just like slide through or if you're gonna use rivets use close holes um, yeah I think that is all all right and then here is uh, the chart that I use uh, when trying to find what size hole I should create so if it's not a 10 or a 20 uh, feel free to pause right here and take a screenshot of it but yeah uh, and then free fit we usually don't use it's too loose for the bolts but yeah alright uh, yeah alright so moving on to uh, gears pulleys belts and sprockets so some vocab so pitch the pitch is going to be a little bit different the definition of the pitch is going to be a little bit different for each of these um, so in the a gear the pitch is going to be the d distance between the center of one tooth to another tooth uh, for pulley the pitch is going to be uh, the diameter of the tooth part itself for a round uh, pulley uh, for a belt it's going to be the same uh, as a pulley uh, one thing to keep in mind with a belt is that to find the pitch diameter of a belt you multiply the pitch by the amount of teeth in the belt uh, yeah and then uh, the sprocket the pitch is going to be the the same as the pulley where it's the size of the curve uh, but you you generally don't need to know the definition of the pitch for each of these um, but uh, pitch diameter is pretty important so pitch diameter is going to be the the diameter of uh, all of these uh, with uh, the diameter you get when with uh, the pitch uh, when the pitch of all the teeth are uh, put together in a circle uh, so for for gears generally you you don't try to use pitch you use something called diametral pitch or a module a DP uh, so that's ba it basically uh, the amount of teeth that is uh, per the amount of teeth you're going to have per gear or per uh, yeah the amount of teeth you're going to have in a gear per an inch of the pitch diameter and so in a 20 in a 20 dp gear you're going to have 20 teeth for every one inch of the diameter and then module is the same thing but in millimeter metric uh, and then center to center is just the center distance between one pulley and another pulley, or one sprocket and another sprocket, or one gear and another gear. All right. So, using those definitions that we have right now, so for gears, finding the pitch diameter is uh, uh, the number of uh, teeth in the gear divided by the diametric pitch. And so, I suggest you refrain to using. 20, uh, 20 dp for most applications and somewhere you need to be super specific you can use 32 but uh, 20 dp is going to be the most common uh, in FRC and it's uh, keeping one constant is going to be very useful and so to find the center, center between uh, two of these two, two different gears just draw two different tangent circles uh, defined by the pitch diameter of uh, both your gears so like if it's a 14 tooth gear uh, and a 64 tooth gear you draw a small circle for the 14 and a big circle for the 64 and then you'd add uh, three thousandths of an inch to the outsides of each of these circles 
Uh, just to make sure that these gears don't grind against each other, there's there's a bit of space between them. Uh, yeah, that's that's gears. Pretty simple. Um, for pulleys and belts, there's two different types of pulleys. Uh, uh that we use we use a um, three millimeter uh, and five millimeter pitch, and for five millimeter we use uh, HTD, and for three millimeter we use GT two. Um, there is a difference between these. So, uh, GT2 belt is going to have a little bit more contact between uh, the the pulley and the, the belt. So, yeah. Uh, then HCD. Uh, so, using a GT2 belt on like an HCD pulley, uh, you're definitely going to get, uh, you, you're going to get, have a, uh, less efficient transfer of power and same thing goes for vice versa so try to use HCD with HCD and GT2 with GT2 but um, for things like FRC that kind of stuff is a little bit negligible um, so to find the correct belt and your correct CC use a calculator I uh, do try to do Trying to do the calculations by yourself is just not practical. Use use one of the many calculators that they have online. Uh, plug in your two different belt sizes, and then just keep plugging in uh, CCs till you get what you want. Uh, and as I was saying for belts, to get the pitch diameter of a belt, most of the times when you're trying to buy a belt, sometimes. Like uh, if you're buying a belt from V Belt guys, they only, they they the naming convention of the belt is, uh, pitch and then pitch diameter, not teeth. Uh, so to get the pitch diameter from the amount of teeth, uh, you just take your pitch, uh, multiply it by the number of teeth that you have, and you get your pitch diameter. And in in situations where you don't need that much strength uh, between your two belts. Uh, you can have them a little bit loose, uh, subtract uh, one tenth or three tenths uh, so that your uh, belts spin a bit easier. There's not that much uh, friction, uh, there's less friction on them because they're less tight on the, on the pulleys. Your belts are less tight on the pulleys. Uh, and then sprockets. So sprockets. There are two main types of sprockets you use. There's number 25 and number 30. Um, and this this number is not not the pitch. This is just the number uh, demarcation for the sprocket. I believe the pitch for uh, t uh, pitch for this is an eighth of an inch. It's either an eighth or a quarter. No, it's a quarter of an inch. And this one is. Uh, three eighths, I believe. I I don't know. You're gonna have to search that up. Uh, but uh, use a calculator again. Um, trying to calculate again by hand is very difficult. They already have um, calculators for this online. Uh, you just plug in your CC, and it'll tell you the amount of links, and adjust your CC for you, or if you want a certain number of links, it'll tell you the CC that you get. And um, when your sprockets are the same size, use a zero point uh, a eighteen thou adder to the CC between your two sprockets. Um, otherwise, just use a tensioner whenever you can because sometimes the sprockets tend to be a bit loose uh, but if you can't fit a CC um, if you can't fit a tensioner uh, you could use uh, either you try to use an inline tensioner in the chain or you're gonna have to live with the chain being a little bit loose and that might cause a little bit of backlash in your mechanism so we'll get into backlash later but yeah that might be a problem Alright, 
Now moving on to the physics. This is this is just very very basic physics, basics of kinematics. So some some terms you're gonna want to know. You're gonna want to know uh, sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, you're gonna want to know you're gonna want to know what force is, newtons and pounds. Uh, and that force is mass times acceleration. You're gonna need to know what work is. So work in joules uh, and uh, work is force times distance. Uh, you're gonna need to know what power is. So power is um, work over change in time. It's also uh, force times velocity. Uh, and then you're going to need to know torque. Torque, which is going to be force times radius times sine. Um, sine theta. Most of the times, your sine theta is just going to be uh, 1 because you're always going to be going straight. But, I don't know, sometimes you might have a weird one. But yeah, um, and then the speed of gravity, who use, try to stick to 10 meters per second just to make calculations easier. Um, it's close enough to, um, it's close enough to what we uh, use. Uh, yeah, and um, and then for uh, pounds to newtons, uh, one pound is equivalent to about 4.45 newtons. All right, let's move on. All right, so kinematics. So we use these to find the, these are the mechanics of motion. Uh, and we usually use this to find the amount of power that you need for a mechanism or how fast a mechanism can travel with the amount of power that you have. Uh, we also use them to find the amount of torque that's necessary for a mechanism. Uh, and so yeah, here are some practice questions, some very basic practice questions. Feel free to pause the video right now.